me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter, um, well, you know, I've been fighting where, where to start. Uh, it's a, I don't want to make too long a reading. But go to, go to chapter 1. <clears throat> and um, actually, yeah, let, let's go to chapter 1 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. And if you don't have your Bible, that's okay. You can listen to me. And uh, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be founding or basing much of my comments on uh, the, the passage. So you'll be able to follow me as well. Uh, verse 20, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians says, Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish... The wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know Him, God was pleased through the foolishness, say foolishness with me please, foolishness. through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. Now go with me to chapter 2, because remember that when the Bible was written, it wasn't written in chapters or verses. Those are just conveniences that were um, you know, put together hundreds and hundreds of years after the Bible was written to make it easy for referencing and going to one place to another and so on. But it, in, in the Apostle Paul's mind... It was just one thought that he was developing, you know, illuminated by the Holy Spirit. So he, I think chapter 2 is very much linked to uh, what I just read. And in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When I came to you, brethren, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except what? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with what? A demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on what? On God's power. I'm going to drink of this water. I hope the person who was drinking it doesn't have any kind of contagious diseases or anything like that. I declare, I declare it pure right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I, I was asking the Lord for you know, a passage. As I, as I preach in these beginning stages of this ministry, I'm asking the Lord to um, help us to uh, bring about sermons that... Um, uh, serve as foundational teachings for this ministry. And, and I think our, our Latino, our uh, Spanish ministry, uh, sort of has, has uh, lived on these principles. But it's so good to be able to kind of revisit them and to establish them as sort of declare them prophetically over this ministry. And, and, and I hope that we will always be founded on these uh, principles that I want to share with you, such as the one that I'm sharing with you tonight. And uh, I love this passage because it, it, um, it speaks about something which is so important to the Christian faith. You know, Christianity is a religion that is not based on, um, a, on, a, on a series of, um, uh, let's say, intellectual declarations or on doctrine, even though it has doctrinal aspects. I mean, you will agree with me that actually Christianity is one of the most profound religions in all of human history. That's why seminaries exist, and that's why uh, pastors go through many years of uh, studying theology. And there's a, there's a whole system about Christianity that is very profound, very uh, coherent, and highly rational. But Christianity is not founded, it's not based on that it's not based on theology it is based on what it's based on a person right it is based on the person of jesus christ it, it, it is a it is a religion that is based 
on a relationship that human beings established with that incredible being that is Jesus Christ. It, 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 uh, it has been said that Christianity is not religion, it is relationship. And uh, unless, you know, one, one has that relationship with Jesus Christ, then all the teachings of Christianity, all the doctrine, all the credos of Christianity really have no meaning. They don't have any real substance. You can only know <clears throat> the truth of Christianity by first having your mind renewed, your spirit uh, renovated through an encounter with Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you are looking at Christianity from the outside, and all that you see is simply the husk, the outside, all the, 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 the literature, the intellectual content. But what animates Christianity is the power within it that comes through Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus said, for example, in, in uh, John chapter 15, Remain in me, and I in you, and that will allow you to bear much fruit. Because out of, aside from me, uh, separated from me, you can do absolutely nothing. See? And, and he said, you know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a branch that is uh, attached to the trunk of a tree or, or a fruit attached to the branch of a tree. As soon as you take that branch off the tree, from which it takes its nourishment, or you take that fruit off the tree, a process of deterioration begins immediately. As long as the branch is able to remain injected in the life of the tree, then the branch can remain full of life. And, and Jesus used that example to say, that's the way it is in, 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 in this thing that I am beginning. Unless you remain yoked to me, and you kind of uh, you know, plug yourself into my source of energy, you can do nothing. Don't, don't even go there, because you're not going to get anything out of Christianity. Unless... You go through Jesus Christ. So it is a religion that is based on a, on a uh, spiritual transaction, if you will. On a spiritual reality. That is, you know, the mind cannot explain it. I think the mind can look at it and approach it, but it cannot exhaust it in its mystery. It, it has, it, it, it's simply something that you uh, experience. Something that you, you uh, become familiar with. Through, uh, you know, intravenously, if you will. It, it, it's through your spirit. It's through your entrails. Not as much through the mind. That's an important element that we need to uh, remember always. And, and I do pray that our, our community, our, our church, our family, our spiritual family, our ministry will always be based on that understanding. You know, no matter how sophisticated you can get, no matter how, how much teaching and how much uh, theology and so on and so forth, no matter how many buildings you have, how much money you get, uh, how much equipment and so on, you know, the, the, the vitality of a community, of a Christian community, is not based on any of those things. Those things come as a result of the visitation of the Spirit in the life of a community. And that's why we always have to go first to the Spirit. We have to be people of the Spirit. We have to be enamored of the Spirit. I pray to the Lord that each of you and each of our people in this community would be able to understand and be overcome by this sense of the mystery of the Christian life. That we will be people who will always dwell in the supernatural realm. I pray that your minds will be renewed just as mine. So that we will always compute life and the processes of life in the light of the Spirit, in the light of the supernatural. I want us to become supernatural people. People who dwell naturally in the supernatural. So that we will, you know, we will always, whatever we need, if we need to make a decision about uh, uh, a relationship or about a career or about a move, uh, a physical move or a financial decision or, or, or an emotional problem, you know, that we, it's, it's great to read books. It's great to look at um, intellectual resources. I, I love that. I mean, I, I spend all my life reading. But um, I know for a fact that that's not where the primary solution lies. It's in the life of the Spirit. It is in going to Christ. It is in the life of prayer. It is in the life of the Spirit. It is about filling myself with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
It is about cultivating the energy that comes from the Holy Spirit.